It's there for it. Now time for member statements. The member from Stormont Dundas, South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. The Cornwall Chamber of Commerce recently hosted its annual Business and Excellence Awards to celebrate the achievements of in innovative businesses and entrepreneurs in my riding. The winners in each category are as follows. Olson Fab for named Business of the Year. Small Business of the Year went to Pure Organic Spa. Our uh, Entrepreneur of the Year went to Rachel Lamaru, the owner of Blooms. Team Cornwall Ambassador of the Year was Roy Nickel of April Wine. The history, historic walking tour singled out as tourism exilism. The creation of over 130 full-time jobs to explore net was honoured for economic impact. The Above and Beyond Award went to Dr. Thorne Galt, and the Cornwall In Innovation Centre received the Breakthrough Award. <coughs> Nolan Quinn received the Young Professional of the Year, and Fred and Bonnie Cappuccino received the Dr. Garth Taylor of Humanitarian Award for their work with children in need around the world. Rick Shaver, the publisher of Seaway News and Cornwall Living, was honoured with the Lifetime Business Achievement Award. But Citizen of the Year was awarded to the very deserving Rachel Lamont, who has worked with the to make a positive dis difference in our community for over 25 years. It is truly great. It is truly a great venue and a fun night. And I would like to thank Chair Roy, Roy McLennan and Executive Manager Leslie Strasher for being, re and she was recognized for 30 years of wow. dedicated service. And to all the chamber and all the, the volunteers who put together such a great night. So, on behalf of the residents of Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry, a job well done. Well done. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Nickelbelt. Thank you, Speaker. Ontario has six different drug plans. The latest is called OHIP Plus and is for children and youth. OHIP Plus started on January 1st, and since then, my office has received countless calls of frustrated parents. Here's a few examples. Robin LaBelle's daughter takes 13 different medications, which were all covered by her workplace drug plan. Since January 1st, the pediatrician at Sick Kids are doing applications to the Ministry of Health, the AP program, so that they can have coverage through OHIP Plus or at least get a written refusal from the ministry so the family's insurance will pay. So far, all we got is frustration and out-of-pocket costs. Brenda Skipinski, sons, takes a common drug, but because he needs a 10 milligram pill rilather than the usual 20 milligram, it is not covered. Her pediatrician applied to the EAP weeks ago, and they are still waiting. The doctor told her it will be six to eight weeks before they hear back from the ministry. So Brenda is now paying out of pocket for medication that her drug plan used to cover. Epilepsy Ontario is here today. They share the story of four years old Ava. OHIP Plus will not cover the drug covered generic anti seizure medication because, get that, Speaker, your child must first try and fail at two other medications before OHIP Plus will cover the generic medication that works and control her seizure. This is not acceptable. This liberal new drug plan is making our health care system less caring and less compassionate. Thank you. We can do better. For the member statements, the member from Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It gives me great pleasure to rise today and acknowledge a tremendous event in Kingston and the Islands history and a very good announcement. As many of you know, six prison farms across Canada were closed starting in 2010, including two in Kingston, the Joyceville and Collins Bay institutions. Last week, we learned that the federal government of Canada is committing $4.3 million over the next five years to reopen Kingston's prison farms. Yay. Yes. I would also like to acknowledge the work of our MP Mark Gerritsen and the Federal Minister, the Honourable Ralph Goodale, the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness, for their tremendous work on this file. Mr. Speaker, I would also like to acknowledge a group of absolutely outstanding activists in my riding who never gave up the fight for the, to have the farms reinstated. For nearly a decade, members of the Save Our Prison Farms group have campaigned, lobbied, and sacrificed their Monday nights in snow, sleet, hail, rain to stand vigil outside of the Collins Bay Institution in order to bring the cows home. Such advocates include Diane Dowling and Jeff Peters, who kept pushing even when there was little hope of progress. They continued to stand guard for perhaps one of our society's most marginalized group of population, and they, their work has paid off. Mr. Speaker, in my view, 
This is a typical Kingston story. It's a story of steadfast resilience and a group of people who came together for the well-being of a marginalized population. That, to me, is a big part of what Kingston is all about. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I want to pay tribute to Florence Kale, a remarkable constituent who passed away last month. Florence was a beacon of grace and compassion who dedicated her life to the service of others. Driven by her strong Christian faith, Florence and her husband mortgaged their house in Stratford uh, to start the House of Blessing in 1983. Today, this, is, this now 9,000-square-foot centre offers food, clothing, and children's programs to the less fortunate in our community. In 2015, Florence also opened the Healing Rooms of Stratford, a non-denominational centre where people can go for prayer and spiritual support. For her efforts, Florence was recognized with many awards over the years, including Stratford Citizen of the Year, Ontario's Medal for Good Citizenship, and the Queen's Golden Jubilee and Diamond Jubilee Medals. More importantly, Florence is remembered and cherished by the countless people whose lives she touched. A longtime House of Blessing volunteer, Jackie Beale, had this to say, When I was down, God answered my prayers to an angel on earth. That angel on earth was Flo. Speaker, we can all be inspired by this humble woman who served as a living example of the scriptural teaching, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I would like to extend condolence to Florence, husband of 56 years, Norm, her family and friends, and everyone else whose life she changed for the better. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener-Waterloo. Thank you very much. I'm proud today to rise to speak about International Women's Day. And while it is fitting to celebrate the achievements of women, it is just as important to recognize all of the work that we still need to do to achieve equity and equality for everyone in this province. We know that parity doesn't happen overnight, but it has been 30 years since the Pay Equity Act was passed, and still women make 30 per cent less than men, racialized women make 32 per cent less, immigrant women make 39 per cent less, and Indigenous women make 57 per cent less. It doesn't have to be this way. This year's theme for International Women's Day is Press for Progress, and it's clear that there is so much more that that we can do together. We need to ensure that the voices of the LGBTQ plus folks are taken seriously and respected. We need to make childcare more affordable and accessible for young parents. We need to stand in solidarity with Indigenous women to address the call for action on missing and murdered women and children. And we need to elect more diverse voices to this legislature and to councils. And that is why I'm so proud to be working with St. Jerome's University to found Waterloo Region's first Equal Voice Chapter on March 25th, and I'll be welcoming my girls' government group from Vista Hills Public School to this legislature on April 9th. For me, this International Women's Day is a call to action. We can do more. We must do more. Thank you very much. Mr. Thank you. <clears throat> for the member statements, the member from Scarborough Centre. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. On January 24, 2018, my mother, Olga Dugut, passed away from respiratory failure at Ajax Hospital. While we'll all miss her, it's my dad, Jim, whose life has been left with the biggest hole after 56 years of marriage. Their relationship was one of absolute devotion and total love, something that's very rare, especially in today's just-in-time world. Looking back, I don't believe we could think of any time that they ever spent more than a night away from each other. For those that don't believe in the term soulmates, you would if you met Jim and Olga. To my siblings and I, our mom helped make us who we are. She gave us the inspiration to do whatever in life that we, we chose to do, the confidence to take chances and per pursue our dreams knowing that no matter whether we failed miserably or succeeded, we always knew that we'd be greeted by our mom and dad with love and pride. That is an incredible advantage in life. She was fiercely proud of her kids. One out of three of us pursued a reputable profession. My sister became a nurse and was a nurse for over 30 years. As for the other two, my brother became a lawyer and, of course, the other became a politician. Thank God for my sister. Despite that, you always knew her greatest pride was her kids and her grandkids. While we all still mourn her loss, we're comforted by the fact that she had a great 80 years and her love and pride for us all will continue to give us strength 
confidence and joy throughout the rest of our lives. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members, statements. The member from the Piankar. Speaker, I rise today to congratulate one of the best Pee Wee Girls House League teams in all of Canada, the Nepean Ice Crushers of the Wildcats organization. Regular season and league champions, here, here. the team also plays first in Elmont and second in the DIFD tournaments. I often share great sports stories from teams across Nepean and Carleton, but this one, Speaker, is very personal. I'm a parent and a trainer of this team. This was the team that I spent my weekends with and who, especially in the past eight weeks, gave me more moments to treasure and enjoy than I could have ever imagined. Um, the Nippian Ice Crushers were led by our phenomenal coach, Scott Boasley, and his amazing coaching, cho coaching staff and, uh, and Den Mums. And yesterday, he handed out gold medals to Addison Wellstead, Allison, Alyssa Tam, Ava Baja, uh, Dina Youssef, Emma Gardner, Aaron Lee, Ulali Babillon, uh, Holly Graham, Janelle May, Lauren Boasley, Melinda Palumbo, who scored the game-winning goal, <laughs> Kyla McCormick, who got three shutout speaker, Natalia Martinez Paris, uh, Torin Clark, and of course my own daughter, Victoria Varner. These girls were invested. They shared many ups and downs, and they felt responsibility for one another. They were each other's champions. They often had tough games, but they had lots of laughs. They, gave a, they brought us all together, and as teams often do. And of course, we know that's what hockey is and why it's the greatest game on earth. I say frequently that. Um, all-Stars aren't necessarily the best players. All-Stars are talented on and off the ice, and that's what those ice crushers were. So I want to congratulate them for a great season, and I was grateful to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you. That statement answers a lot of questions. Never mess with a hockey mom. Yeah, never. <laughs> <laughs> Further member statements, the member from Beach is East York. Well, thank you, Speaker, and I rise today in advance of tabling a private member's bill to talk about the importance of lowering the voting age in Ontario. Young people, 16 and over, have adult responsibilities in our province, but they are denied some of these same rights. They are contributing and active members of our society, and thousands are employed or volunteer in their communities. In denying them the right to vote, we are effectively disenfranchising them. And this implies that we think that they have nothing of value to add to the political conversations. But nothing, Speaker, could be further from the truth. In fact, many young people like the ones who are here today inspired this private member's bill. I'm happy to bring it forward. Despite their inability to vote, young people do find ways to engage in the political process. One of the greatest testaments of this is happening now south of the border. Students from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School have challenged senators and congressional representatives and have sparked the hashtag Never Again movement. These young people are engaged in a substantive debate on gun control. But they did not and could not vote for the representatives responsible for these laws. So, Sir Speaker, I believe that giving 16-year-olds the right to vote will increase voter participation and will cause political parties to develop policies that take youth interests into consideration. Moreover, taxation without representation was not acceptable in the 1700s in England and should not be acceptable in modern-day Ontario. We must provide young people with a, a direct and democratic channel for making their views heard, and in doing so, we give them a responsible stake in the future of Ontario. And so, Speaker, for this reason, I ask all members of this House to support lowering the voting age for, to, to, in Ontario to 16. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Bruce Gray Owens. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm excited to rise today and recognize yet another young and enterprising constituent from my riding of Bruce Gray Owens Sound. This time, I'd like to share with the House news from Lion's Head, where a 17-year-old fiddler extraordinaire, Brooklyn Hewton, showed immense creativity and generosity when she used a $150 grant from the Royal Bank of Canada, Canada's 150 grant, and turned it into almost 13,000 worth of donations for the Lion's Head Hospital Auxiliary. Wow. Brooklyn, who plays fiddle with Midnight Blue, and my friend Dave Nixon, hosted last summer a musical fundraiser for the local hospital. Her double duty act as organizer and performer drew a crowd of 600 people to the Bruce County Country Music Fest in Lion's Head, where she entertained them for several hours to the sound of country and bluegrass music. The fundraiser was a huge boost for Brooklyn, whose initial goal was to raise $5,000. In the end, she actually more than doubled her goal when she sold some 600 tickets and collected almost 13,000 in donations with the help of the Lion's Head Auxiliary members. Auxiliary President Sharon Weingarten says Brooklyn's, and I quote, initiative, creativity, and generosity are an inspiration to us all. And the auxiliary hospital staff, doctors, nurses, the whole community are proud of her efforts to make a difference to health care in our community. 
and because Brooklyn, who was crowned queen at last year's Groundhog Day Festival, isn't one to rest on her laurels without a shadow of a doubt, she is already busy planning the next live music festival, which she promised would go again toward making a difference in our community and helping to keep services close to home. Considering Brooklyn's musical talents have been well known for several years, there's no doubt she will continue to do amazingly well at home and beyond. Brooklyn, thank you so much and all the best of continued success. Thank all members for their statements.